Before cutting any of the profiles of the ESS47 sliding door system, make sure the corresponding plastics are inserted into each bar. The frame plastic is inserted as shown, making sure both wings are inserted into the slots correctly. Same again with the sash plastic. Insert as shown, making sure the back sits flat against the profile. When inserting the interlock plastic, make sure both hooks sit into the profile correctly. Once the profiles have been cut, all the mitered ends of the frame and sash should be punched. Wool pile needs inserting into each profile. The frame needs one piece in the upstand. There are two pieces of wool pile in the sash. These are inserted into the outer edge of the sash on both sides. There are three pieces of wool pile for the interlock. The first is placed horizontally like so. The second is placed vertically just above. And the last is placed in the final slot just above that. This last one should also be swapped out for a gasket on external doors. To drain the frame, the drainage holes need to be placed in the front edge of the trough and can be face drained as shown. It can also be drained straight through for sill drainage. On the internal drainage, you should use non-return valves. They let the water out, but stop the draft coming in. These are attached by drilling 12mm holes, allowing the valves to be pushed into place as shown. Before putting the frame together, make sure you put the track in the bottom and the anti-draft blocks into the frame. Making sure the wall pile is to the inside of the building. The bottom needs siliconing down to stop water from creeping past. The top block can be trimmed down in width slightly so it can be moved freely into the frame. This is to allow it to be slid out of the way to get the doors in. Make sure to fill the drain sections with the profile and cover all exposed aluminium with silicon before putting the frame together. These are your frame cleats. Loosen the screws so both sides are separate. Push one side into the profile until they click into place. Repeat the process for the other cleats. When putting the frame together, you can use your Allen key to engage the other side of the cleat until it clicks into position. Tighten all four corners as shown using a 4mm Allen key. Just one screw per cleat with no need for adjustment. Make sure to level the profiles with your hand as you tighten the screw. Once the frame is together, the frame gasket can be fitted. The flatter side of the gasket goes to the outside and this is pushed into place around the frame, only where the moving doors are. The gasket can either be cut or bent around the corner of the frame. If there is a fixed sash on the door, use the fixed sash blocks. Make a clearance hole in the top and a 3mm hole in the bottom and screw them onto the bottom and side of the frame, approximately 150 millimeters from the edge of the frame. And the same from the center of the frame. The screw should go through the center of the track slot as shown, and the block should sit straight on the frame. Use the fabrication manual to get the routing details for the interlock. These two holes can be marked up using the interlock cap. Place the cap in level with the end of the profile and mark through the holes in the cap. 
This final hole is marked 23.5mm in and 52.5mm up from the smaller edge. There are many different handle and lock options. This is just one. Drill out the handle holes and router out the side. This will be different depending on which handle and lock strip you will be using. On the 90 degree sides of the widths of each sash you will need to take 11.5mm off both faces so it sits into the interlock profile. This detail is shown in the fabrication manual. Before putting the sashes together, cut down the TV80603 screw port profile to 60mm and place underneath the aluminium spacer in the sash until it is flush. Make a clearance hole in the top thermal and screw on using a short screw towards the end of the screw port. Make sure the screw pot is flush or slightly inside the profile when screwing in. When putting the cleats and chevrons in, put one chevron in the top, apply glue into the chamber before adding one cleat to each side. Then two more chevrons in the slot shown. Repeat this for the other mitered sides of the sashes. Silicon all exposed aluminium before putting the corners together. Make sure all the chevrons line up as you put the corner together. Screw together using no longer than 16mm screws. Repeat this process for all mitered joints. When attaching the interlock profile, use 45mm screws, making sure the head sits flat to the profile and screw into the screw port in the sash. The caps for the interlocks come in four pieces, the back plate, the cover, the foam and a spring. Attach the spring to the top of the foam, then this hooked into the back plate as shown. This can then be screwed onto the interlock using the holes we drilled earlier. Once the plate is attached, the cover can be slid over the top. Repeat this process for the other ends of each interlock. For the inline slider lock strips, you will need to cut the TV8011 lock spacer add-on to suit. Place into the profile as shown. Screw on the handle loosely to centralise the lock strip before securing it into place with screws through the face. Make sure the screws go through the add-on and into the sash. The screws should be long enough to go through the metal strip in the sash. Once the lock strip screws are in the top, you can tighten the handle screws. Other lock strips and handles are available. All of the doors are put together in the same way. Fabricate all doors the same as the first one. Piece together and screw in the corners. The interlock can be screwed on either way up depending on which door it is. The internal door needs to be placed this way up so it interlocks with the external door. And the external door needs to be placed this way up so it interlocks with the internal door. Make sure to fully silicon the interlock side as well to stop any water from getting to the screws. We can now screw the wheels on. These carriages take 50 kilos each each single wheel will hold 25 kilograms, so two of these carriages together will take 100 kilos. Or we do larger carriages, this will take 100 kilos by itself, two of these will take 200 kilos. If you need any more than that, you can get these with steel wheels which take 50 kilograms per single wheel. Using the appropriate wheels, making sure the adjuster screw is pointing to the outside, push the wheels into place about 100 millimeters from the edge of the sash and screw into place. Repeat the process for the other side, again about 100mm from the edge, and screw into place as shown. This is your captive gasket with a flap on the bottom. When putting it in, the flap must bend round as shown.
When you meet the corner, cut at 45 degrees and push into place. You can now bead the sash, top and bottom first, then the side. There is no bead in the interlock side. These are the anti-rattle clips. Four must go into the top of every single door. They clip over the wool pile. Two on this side, and two on the other side. Introduce the fixed sash to the frame. Slide the top in first, and then the bottom. Slide it up onto the fixed light blocks we fitted earlier. Make sure to screw into the block through the side first to make sure the door is all the way back before screwing in the bottom. Once you've attached the fixed sash, the master door goes on the inside track, top first, then the bottom, onto the track, making sure it slides easily. When attaching the keeps for this lock, you must line up the mushroom on the lock with this mark on the keep and screw into place. Repeat this process for the other keeps. Other lock strips are available, which have different keeps. The principle is the same. Add your weather trim and tread plates, and your ESS47 sliding patio door is fully fabricated and ready for installation.